Yeah, Dan, the, the more I see Anthony Richardson mock to the Seahawks at number five, the, the more curious I am about his season and the skill set. And obviously he's a guy who has um, really risen. Uh, maybe not, you know, maybe NFL teams already knew this about him, but certainly in the eyes of the mock draft community, a guy who is, who is rising right now uh, with that strong combine, the, the number that I'm hung up on, and I'm sure that a lot of every NFL team is going to have to work through, is 53% completion yeah. rate. And I know yep. that every every number has a story. With Josh Allen, there was a story behind that low completion rate at Wyoming uh, going into the 2018 draft. I'm wondering, from your perspective as a former quarterback, sure. what do you make of 53%? Yeah, I don't make anything of it. So I, I think we could have like a really good conversation around and about Anthony Richardson. So the reason why I don't make anything about the completion percentage is um, I bet you if we looked at the history of college football, especially in the last 20 years, and you looked at the guys who led the country in completion percentage, most of them did not do anything in the NFL. In relation to Anthony, number one, he had 19 throwaways. So he, he played 12 games last year, I think, 12, started 12 games. He had 19 throwaways. Okay? Number two, they were, University of Florida, 107th when it comes to drops in the in college football. That means 106 teams in college football caught the ball better than Florida. So if we just look at 19 drops, or excuse me, 19 throwaways, which is one and a half per game, and we look at a team that averaged over two drops a game, if you take that one throwaway a game and one drop per game, and add it and, and count those as completions over the course of a 12 game season, his completion percentage goes to like 64. So then we're not having a conversation about completion percentage. I remember doing the exact thing with Josh Allen. Because that's what happens, guys. And, and, and Brock, you know this. It's like when you look at the number, you go, huh. And then you watch the tape and you go, those two things aren't, they, they don't look the same. It's not making sense. And that's why I've said, when people are saying, well, Anthony Richardson has accuracy issues, I sit there and go, no, he doesn't. Does he miss throws? Of course. But accurate, accurate, when we say a guy has accuracy issues, it means he's an inaccurate player, that, he, that, that he, he, he misses throws on a consistent basis that others don't. And I just don't see that. Do I think mechanically he has flaws with his footwork? 100%. Do I think that's one of the easiest things to fix? A hundred percent. So that's why I sit there and I go, we're framing the conversation around Anthony Richardson like he's a finished product. And the flaw is something that is so glaring, it's non-fixable or non-adaptable. Um, you know, adaptable. And I just don't believe that.